بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the class of Akhlaq Today inshallah we will discuss the relationship between the Muslim and other Muslims Now if you notice the circle is getting bigger and bigger We started with the Muslim within himself between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the Muslim with his parents with his spouses, with his children, and now the Muslim, after that we discuss the Muslim with his relatives, with his neighbors, and now the Muslim with other Muslims, how he should deal with them. What's the ideal relationship between the Muslim and other Muslims? Now, before we discuss it, I will mention a story, and that story is very significant, and it could tell us many lessons. But it is only one example about how Muslims live together in the time of the Messenger Wasallam. How the students of the Prophet Wasallam treated each other. Abu Jahm al-Adawi, radiyallahu an, one of the companions, he said after the battle of Al-Yarmouk, and the battle of Al-Yarmouk we know it happened in Jordan, what we call nowadays, between the Muslims and the Romans. And the Muslims were victorious in that battle, but many Muslims were killed. He said, I had a cousin and I was looking for him within the casualties, the people who are injured. And I found him on the verge of death. I carried with me some water, a pot of water. So if, if he needed to drink, I may give him drink. If he needed to wipe his face, so I offered him the water and he motioned that he wanted the water. But once he did that, he heard a voice of a man who was moaning in pain. So he told me to go to that man first. So now look at how they prefer some people over themselves. And you may say, yes, if my brother asked me for something, I may give it to him. But look at when they did this in a very difficult time. And usually when we are troubled, we don't care about anyone else. We are thinking only of ourselves. Yet, his cousin told him to go to that man. He went there and it was Saeed ibn al-As. And he told him the same. He offered him the water and he wanted that water. But then he heard another man moaning in pain. So now there are three people. And he did the same thing. He told him to go th to that man first. Now they are on the verge of death. They are almost dying. And they need anything, any help. Yet, they preferred other people over themselves. So he went to that man, Abu Jahm al-Adawi radiallahu an, but that man was already dead. He returned to Saeed and he was already dead. He went to his cousin to find him already dead. The three of them died. They did not get anything, but definitely they will be rewarded for their intention. How can we reach that level? How much do we need to reach that level? Especially nowadays, when it's always about you. How much can you make? How much are you better than others? Look at the ads on TV, commercials, and anywhere you go. It is always about yourself, the ego. If you want the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you have to think about others. Try to give in order for you to get. But nowadays, unfortunately, we are in culture that teaches everything should be about you. How much can you make? How much can you study? How much can you do? How and it's always about you. In Islam, it is about everyone else. And Islam teaches us that if I wanted to benefit, I will benefit by helping others. We learn from the Sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, once he came to Medina, after building the masjid, he established the brotherhood between Al-Muhajirin and Al-Ansar. And you already studied the terms of, these, of this brotherhood. So what are these terms, if you can remember? Hmm? You share your wealth. Was that 
one of the terms? They help each other. That's one thing. What else? There are specific terms. Protection. Stay with them in their houses. If, if, yeah, if there was the brotherhood established and the immigrant does not have a house, he will stay with, with the one from the Ansar. If the one from the Ansar died, who will inherit him? The immigrant. That was earlier at that time. And we had great examples. And the great example is Abdurrahman ibn Awf with Sa'd ibn Rabi'. The famous example. Now why I mention this because that's not what the term said. Some companions, like when the Prophet told them this is what you should do, they even exceeded that point. They did more. What would let them do that? Why they did it? Why would Sa'd ibn Rabi'ah come to Abdurrahman ibn Awf to tell him, look at my two wives and the one that you like, I will divorce her and after her adda you will marry her. That was not one of the terms. Why he told him this? Because of the iman. Because they had strong iman. Why nowadays, if a brother came to my house, I can have half an hour with him and then I will tell him I am busy or... That's it, I cannot, please, I have other things. Why? Because our iman is not like their iman. We are so busy, so consumed with this life. They had jobs to do also at their time. But the priority was to their religion. He offered him half of his money. He did not have to do that. Yes, he should help him, but not half of his money. He did not have to do that. Why would he do it? It was the iman. It was the true brotherhood. Yet, Abdurrahman, radiallahu anh, he did not say, oh, that's easy money. He could have got, took it, and there is no, no problem with taking that money. He can take it. If someone offered you money, there is no harm on taking it. But Abdurrahman, he said no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the, the Ansar. وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّأُوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ And those who had the houses... The dwellings beforehand means the Ansar. And Iman, they had Iman. Allah witnessed that they had Iman. They love whoever came to them. And they don't have anything in their heart towards them or against them. And they prefer over themselves. Even if they did not have enough means. And that's the great thing. When you spend while you don't have enough. Not when you have millions and you give 100 or 1,000. But when you have all, almost 1,000 and you are giving half of it or more than that. In the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there is the, na- the nature of ourselves that we like to withhold. We like to keep. That's what Allah says in the Quran. Allah says if you have the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you would have. Withheld your hands, not spending. قُلْ لَوْ أَنْتُمْ تَمْلِكُونَ خَزَائِنَ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّي إِذَنْ لَأَمْسَكْتُمْ خَشْيَةَ الْإِنْفَاقِ وَكَانَ الْإِنْسَانُ قَتُورًا It is the nature of, of the human being that he withhold his hand. But those Ansar, they gave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them for that. And this is a lesson for us. Now this happened at the time of the Messenger of Sallallahu That does not mean it should not happen. Whenever a Muslim needed something, we should help. But the problem, we talk a lot and once it comes to actions, you may help one of the people one time. If he came again, please, I helped you. Even if it was like three, four, five years. I have half an hour, but that's it. What if he needed two months, three months, one year? What do we do? Actually, I was asked a question just like three days ago. One of the sisters, she was divorced. She has no one here. She is divorced. And she has no relative. Where can she go? Islamically, she got all her money. Already, long time ago. She has been living with her husband for 20 years. And the mahr was paid and everything. And now he divorced her. If she went to the court, she will take half 
of his wealth. But can she do that or not? If she did not, then there is no place to stay in. And I really did not have an answer. Who's responsible for this? For this? What can we do? What can we offer? We are so busy with ourselves. Alhamdulillah, I, I am having enough. I am doing a good job and that's it. Whatever happens elsewhere, it's not my problem. It's not my fault. This is a problem. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for that. Unfortunately, the more we concentrate on our own lives, the more we concentrate on how much we make, on we, we, we busy ourselves with this life, the more expenses and the more things that are taking us from the original cause. Even at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, companions, they had jobs to do. They had to spend. Nowadays, you have some vacations you can take. You have off Saturday and Sunday. Yet, we don't have time. I don't know what's going on. It is really a problem. Now, why do we have to do this? Why do we have to be good to our brothers, to our sisters? First, it is a condition of Iman. And what's the evidence? From the Sunnah of the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The sweetness of Iman. Someone would say, I don't want the sweetness. It's enough for me. Without sweet. How you can prove it is a condition? Yes. Yes. Exactly. You don't believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Why the Prophet ﷺ would say that? And actually we studied this in Al-Akhlaq. What did we say? What did Ibn Hazm rahimahullah, say about this? If you remember, there are two virtues that cover all qualities. What are they? From the Messenger ﷺ, he said two ahadith, two traditions. You forgot. Hmm. Yes, very good. That's one of them. Do not anger. This is the first one. What's the second one? Exactly. What uh, you love for your brother, what you love for yourself. Why? They cover all virtues. Because when you don't anger, you will control yourself. And you won't transgress. And when you love for your brother, what you love for yourself, you will be just. You will never oppress your brother. You will never be unjust. But nowadays, even if you are making millions, and your brother, he is in need, you don't care. No, Islam tells you, you have to care. You have to love to him what you love for yourself if you wanted to perfect your iman. So this is one thing. That's why you have to, to think. Actually, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَن لَمْ يَهْتَمَّ لِأَمْرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَلَيْسَ مِنْهُمْ He who does not care about the matters of the Muslims, he's not one of them. You have to care. And again, it's easy to say it, but we need to practice it. We need to do something about it. Look what the Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith. The strongest bonds of faith. Faith, the strongest ties. أَوْثَقُ عُرَى الْإِيمَانِ الْحُبُّ فِي اللَّهِ وَالْبُغْضُ فِي اللَّهِ To love for the sake of Allah and to hate for the sake of Allah. You're doing this only for the sake of Allah. You're not doing this because you expect from Him to pay you back. Or you expect that He may help you here or there. You are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the strongest ties of Iman. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ told the companions about a man who was visiting a friend, a brother for him, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in another city. So the angel came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the angel, and that angel talked to that man, and he asked him, why you are going to visit that friend, that brother? Do you have any worldly cause? And he said, no. I love him for the sake of Allah and I'm going to visit him. So what did the angel tell him? What was the reward? Allah sent me to tell you that all your sins were forgiven for that intention. Now it was only one trip. It's not for Hajj. It's not for Umrah. It's not. It was only to visit a brother for the sake of Allah. And what happened to him? His sins were forgiven. 
nowadays, how many times do we travel? What's the reason for our traveling? Allah will reward you. Look how much the Prophet ﷺ cared about the companions. He used to ask about every one of them. If someone is missing, he will ask. Thabit bin Qais radiallahu an. He was one of the companions who used to talk aloud in the masjid. He was the speaker on behalf of the Messenger Wasallam. Just like nowadays we have speaker on behalf of so and so, on behalf of so and so. Thabit bin Qais radiallahu an, he used to be the speaker. Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu an, he used to be the poet. One day, Prophet Wasallam did not see Thabit and he asked, where is Thabit? And they told him that the ayah was revealed not to raise your voices in the house of Allah in the masjid. So he felt that his, his deeds were null. So he's crying. So the Prophet ﷺ told him, tell him to come because his deeds are not null. When the woman or the man who used to clean the masjid, now again, those are not VIP people. Those are very normal people. The Prophet ﷺ asked about them. How many people do you know? How many times do you ask about them? So it is really, I mean, it is really not only words that we say, but it is actions. The Prophet ﷺ again in Sahih Muslim, he mentioned the hadith of the seven types of people that will be shaded in, on the day of judgment. Who are those types? Do you recall them? Yes, the one whose heart is attached to the masjid. Who's the first one? Can you tell me in sequence? The just ruler or imam. Next. That's before, before that, the, the youth who was brought up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether male or female. What else? The man whose heart is attached to the masjid. And then the one that you mentioned. The one that was invited by a rich and pretty woman. Who's, who's next? That's later. But before that, and that's the point why I mentioned this hadith here. Two people, they met each other and they departed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's only. They love each other for the sake of Allah. That's how they gather and that's how they depart each other and they leave each other. For the sake of Allah. What will happen to them? They are shaded in the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will call on those people. Where are those who love each other in the name of my majesty? In the name of my glory? Today I shall offer them a shade. And in the other narration, they will be given pulpits. Pulpits, which means high, higher than people. Everyone else is lower than them, because when you are over the pulpit, you are higher than others. Those pulpits are not of gold or silver, they are of light. Pulpits of light. Even the prophets and the martyrs would admire what those people have gotten. So there is a tremendous reward when you love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we may say these are extra things or these are additional things. So what's the minimum? What's the least that you have to do for your brother or your sister? Like by, by default, as a Muslim, that's what you owe me. And that's what I owe you. Yes. Five things. There are five things. What are they? You say salam. So whenever you see your brother or a sister, sees, that's one thing. What else? You attend the funeral. If he died or she died, you attend the funeral. What else? When sneezing, you say, Yarhamukallah. You accept the invitation. What else? 
when he is sick, you visit. This is the minimum. How many? Five things. Actually, there is a sixth one. Yes, if he sought the advice, you give it. These are the minimum. That's the right. By default, as a Muslim, that's what you owe me. And that's what I owe you. And let's ask ourselves, honestly, how much do we do? Of that minimum, how much are we doing so far? How many brothers and sisters do you know that they were sick? Did you visit them? So, it's really something that we should work on. That's the hadith. It was narrated in Sahih Muslim by Abu Huraira radiallahu an. Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Six are the rights of Muslim over another Muslim. When the Prophet وسلم, said this, the companions asked, What are they? They did not say, Okay, Alhamdulillah, they are six. They asked, What are they? Thereupon, the Prophet وسلم, said, When you meet him, you offer him greeting. You say, Assalamu alaikum. When he invites you, you accept the invitation, you go. When he seeks your counsel, when he wants your advice, you give it to him. And when he sneezes and says, Alhamdulillah, you say, Yarhamukallah. If he's sick, you visit him. And the last one, you follow his janazah funeral. So that's the minimum. So what are we doing? Are we doing those things or we still need to work on the minimum and then we move to the extra things? There is an interesting story again. When Umar radiallahu anhu was stabbed and he knew that he was dying when he was the Khalifa after 10 years of leading the Muslims. What was his concern? Do you remember the last few hours of Umar radiallahu anh? The Khilafah, that's one of them, to, to see who will be the Khalifa. That was later. But before that. Yes, he asked. He asked, who stabbed me? Why he wanted his son to kill him? No. He wanted to see who was his opponent. Who did that to him? When it was said he was not a Muslim, he said, Alhamdulillah. He was happy that it was not a Muslim, so he would not stand before him in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the care about Muslims. Not only that, when he was stabbed and people used to visit him, and he knew that he's going to die, a youth visited him. One of the youth, he visited him. And his lower garment was down below his ankle. So he called him, he said, come on. He told him, raise your izar. That's the name of the lower. Raise your izar. Take it over the ankle. It is cleaner for it and more pious for you. Now someone, he's dying. He will think how much money I left. Who will take what? And But Umar radiallahu anh, he was thinking about the Muslims. No matter whatever the situation is, as long as he can benefit the Muslims, as if he's able to help them, he will do that. And that's what he did. And there are many examples. Even recently, alhamdulillah, we still have people who care about other Muslims. Like there was one of the scholars. His mother, if she noticed that he's upset or saddened or he is not feeling okay, she asks him, what happened? Is there a Muslim died in China? Is there something wrong happened to a Muslim elsewhere in the world? Because she knew that he cares about Muslims. It is not that he lost a deal or he got a ticket or he has to spend so and so. It is not about himself. It was about other Muslims. And again, the perfect example is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was the role model. 
So we need to start working on our relationship. The Muslim to the other Muslim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Indeed, believers are but brothers. That's who we are. From day one, when the Prophet ﷺ started preaching Islam, there is no difference, no distinction between black and white, rich and poor, except with piety. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Nowadays people are talking about civil rights, liberties. Islam came with these things 1400 years ago. The things that people are fighting to get nowadays, Islam gave them these things 1400 years ago. Here in America, less than 50 years ago, people were still telling you, if you're black, you sit in the back. If you're white, you sit in the front. We don't have this in Islam. Hmm? Yes, until now there is still some kind of discrimination. Islam eliminated that. Even because naturally we tend to incline to our people. Like if I'm from this country, I love the people from this country. We still have these natural things, but Islam told us that this should not be the case. We should control those things. We should overcome them. Just like the companions. The Arab, they, they were racist. Until now there is racism, but you eliminate that. Yeah, yeah, even in marriage, even in... It is still happening. And that's one of the reasons why we are weak. There are many reasons. One of them, we don't, we are not applying the true brotherhood. Now, why America is a very strong country? Why people, they are, like if, if American travel overseas, he's respected. Because he knows that if something wrong happened to him, he has a government that will ask and will defend him. That's the feeling should be for all Muslims, that if something wrong happened to him, there are more than 2 billion Muslims. But where are they? Where is that feeling? Now you know that it is only 10 miles away from you, this thing happened, and you say, Alhamdulillah, it did not happen to me. It is a problem. Okay, we'll stop here, inshallah. Is there any questions about brotherhood? From the students online, is there anything? Okay, then we will stop here, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.